All right, everyone, please welcome to the stage, I can't get over saying this, Sarah Michelle Geller, Rodrigo Santorio, Armari Jackson, Bella Shepard, Chloe Rose Robinson, and Tyler Lawrence Gray. Excellent, excellent. I know y'all were having way too much fun back there, I can tell. <laughs> All right, everyone, let's have a seat. Yes. Yes, we did. I screamed them <laughs> as hard as I can, but I think y'all were yelling really loud, so I'm gonna say it again. So Jeff, Sarah Michelle Geller, Rodrigo Santorio. Trying to get their names. Amari Jackson, Bella Shepard, Chloe Rose Robinson, and Tyler Lawrence Gray. Woo -hoo -hoo! Thank you. I just want to make sure everyone knows your names. We normally have like the name tags up there, and you guys are fresh, lovely, making me feel very old faces, including Miss Sarah Michelle. Try being Geller. me. Yes, yes, I do. <laughs> Again, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Jeff, uh, last a couple months ago at Comic-Con, um, you gave me the greatest gift of my career by letting me introduce the best surprise, Miss Sarah Michelle Geller, which I, like, I have to tell y'all, that was like such a secret operation. Like they snuck her in, like it was like a Harry Styles concert. It was great. <laughs> but it's got to be such a thing. You got to cast the ultimate final girl. It's just so great and in a totally new story. So how fun was that? I, I was pretty amazed, actually, because I, I said to them, we're not going to get Sarah Michelle Gellar. She's not even going to read it. And uh, suddenly I heard uh, the script went out, and the next day they wanted to set up a Zoom, and I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> now I have to impress Sarah Michelle Gellar? Well, I really did dig that trailer, though, so pretty impressive to start. How like much fun is that trailer, you guys? And it was so sad at Comic-Con, though, because I did get to introduce you, but it was like she came out at the very end. You were the best, like, closer in the history of, of fun times. But now I can finally really get to talk to you about what you guys have already shot, what you've already done, this entirely new world. And I will have to say, to say after Buffy that you're going to do something, this genre, this going for that again, it had to be something that really spoke to you. So what was it about the material? It had to be something that really resonated because I owe it to all of you guys and to myself, but there are so many more stories to tell and utilizing the supernatural is how we explain the things that we can't really understand and the things that we, the stories that we can't really grasp or the ones that would be too depressing in real life or too upsetting. And so we, we use those to scare ourselves into understanding. And Jeff's right, I didn't really intend to read it when they sent it to me initially. And, and it, no offense, I'm a big fan, but... It's like werewolves. I was like, not for me. We did a werewolf on Buffy. We did. Seth did it so well, it's hard to, it's hard to step on those toes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, you will always get applause from me for that name, but... Just the, the issues that he wanted to deal with. Well, first of all, discussing the fires. And I, having lived in LA, I was evacuated in the last big fire for almost a week. Wow. We didn't know if our house was gonna burn down, understanding all the motions that come with that. But more importantly, the idea of mental health and the idea of we live in this society that is so digitally connected, but at the same time, ultimately, we're becoming more and more disconnected as humans and we feel extremely isolated and we don't have the support of our pack. And what does that look like for young kids today trying to find their pack and for adults too who feel like we don't fit in anywhere. And it's really scary to feel like you don't fit in, but I think it's, we've all been through the last three years of isolation and it just all of those topics spoke to me and it's really effing scary. Yeah. So the combination of the two was perfect. Yeah, and you feel that from that trailer, like those teeth, like that is not typical. No, <laughs> it's extremely cinematic. Yeah. It is the, this world is so beautiful when you see it and I still sometimes can't believe what we managed to do in the short time that we're doing it. I love it. We need some more time next year. I, trust me, I know. <laughs> Um, before I take it to the rest of the cast, Jeff, that was actually what struck me from the footage that we got to see is it wasn't just, I think, pushing forward with really sort of taking this to dark places with the material. Also, the way you shot it really feels, like she says, cinematic, but also like 
there was a darkness and a richness you wanted to bring into that cinema from the get-go. We, we spent a lot of time talking about the, the vision of the show and what it would look like, and the very first goal was to make it look as cinematic as possible, also to make it look like a streaming show. We want to set ourselves apart. This is a different show. This isn't something you would find on the networks. Um, but uh, I told the directors and our DPs right off the bat, I said, have fun with this. Make it interesting, make it weird, make it cool. Um, everybody online talks about how dark it is. Let's have them, uh, how dark all TV shows are. Um, but let's give them something to watch. Let's give them color and brightness and, and incredible angles. Um, I love the way this show is shot. And it's also different from Teen Wolf. And that was one of the things we wanted to do, was something different from Teen Wolf. We didn't want to just do a carbon copy. Yeah. So this is new. I, I, and very much so. And I hope you don't forgive me for saying, but it felt very Carpenter-esque. Like, it very much felt yeah. that. And so I don't think that was by accident. <laughs> <laughs> um, Rodrigo, I, I do have to say, um, I'm resisting every urge to ask you about love, actually. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like, I love you and it's everything okay. you do. There's no but problem. But I'm that girl, and I'm wearing pink, and you're here. Um, <laughs> but I do have to say, in a show where teenagers are lost in supernatural elements. There's always a group of adults that are way more clueless than they should be. But in this show, it seems that your character is not that, which I thought was kind of interesting from what we can see. I think your character's for once gonna be one of the adults that's like, no, this is where we go. Is this correct? Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, well, I play Garrett Briggs. Garrett is, uh, is a man uh, who's constantly in conflict with the responsibilities of fatherhood. He's a, he's a father of two kids that actually have a very special connection to nature. Um, and uh, he will do anything to protect his kids from outsiders, and, uh, but especially from uh, themselves. Uh, he's a man of very strong values. He's, um, he's a park ranger. I love the character, by the way. Yeah. Uh, and uh, All the park rangers in the back out there. That's for you guys. Yeah. Uh, no, it's a, it's a great, great character, and, uh, and Jeff is amazing, as you know. Um, but he holds uh, very important secrets that will be revealed uh, throughout our story. I dig that. I can say one of the things I love about working with Rodrigo, and when we actually went out to him as well, I said, we're not going to get Rodrigo Santoro. <laughs> And then he started talking, I'm like, oh my God, we have Rodrigo Santoro. Um, but uh, he loves to talk about his character. He loves having conversations about it, dig in deep. And as a, for a writer, that's a joy. When the actor is so involved with their character that, I mean, he's, he said to me the other day, I feel like Garrett would have a scene like this. And I said, okay, let me think about it. And I think it's actually gonna be one of the best scenes in the, um, in the show. And I wrote it like in 10 minutes. Uh, and that's when an art yeah, actor inspires brilliant. you. It's a brilliant scene, by the way. By the way, uh, it's so good that I've now written myself into it in the whoa. episode after <laughs> because it was that good. You're like, I'm no, just I need saying. to be here. No, I love, oh, I dig that. See, this is the thing, though. They didn't even let me see it, y'all. Like, I'm telling you, they're keeping this show under wraps. It's not fair. But one thing I also have gleamed maybe about your character from what we've seen is in this story in particular, the Earth and how what we're doing on it relates way more deeply to these characters. And your character is a conduit to that. And I think that sort of of the land indigenous heartbeat of this story really resonates through your character from what I've read. Yeah, yeah, basically, that's one of the main things that really fascinates me about, about this character. And, uh, you know, as a park ranger, when I was researching, you know, I, I discovered so many things uh, about, you know, what, ta what makes a person to want to become a park ranger, very different reasons. But basically, you know, he really, truly uh, is passionate about protecting nature. And I think here in this show, uh, just what you guys saw already, you know, reveals that we have a, a big thing talking about the wildfires. Yeah. Um, thank you for that. I will also say too, um, I guess it's the foursome. I don't want to say it because I, I don't even, Basically. Like, they haven't Possibly. told me enough to know that, but they've like hinted, like the Paramount people like whisper, they're like, yeah, it's the, they're, they're, they're the main kids. I'm like, well, can you tell me some more? And they say no, but um, 
Armani, from your character, just from the opening scenes, we can see like where your relationships are, and then more importantly, the peril that all four of you are in from the get-go. So if you don't mind, go ahead and sort of preview exactly where your character is and why he's in that situation to be in the hospital bed in those opening moments, maybe. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to say too much. Jeez. Too um, much. First of all, there are a lot of you. This is great. <laughs> um, but no, yeah, we open up pretty, pretty, uh, we open up on Everett on a, in a very difficult part of his life. Um, he, he's a very anxious kid, yet he's very smart. He's a dreamer. Um, and after being bitten by a supernatural creature um, in the middle of a wildfire, as if things couldn't get worse for this kid, um, he starts to realize that maybe this is actually something that he can focus on, and maybe this is actually how he finds his true pack and his true family. Ooh, I like that a lot. Um, you're not the only one, you know, sporting bites in the first one, but we're going to come back there. We're going to come back there. I actually, uh, Chloe, though, I, I want to talk to you a little bit because I always feel whenever we have these groups, there's the one that may be clued in first. And again, I got a gleam, very little. I got like a little bit of press notes and you say two words in the trailer, but you seem to be on it. So am I right in assuming that you might be the guy that helps us to see things quicker as far as the foursome is concerned? Tell us about your character. Well, I think it's, you know, we find Luna in a place where she's been pretty much lonely her entire life, searching for, you know, her pack and her friends. And, uh, you know, her only real relationship is with her brother and her father. Um, even less so with her brother, as you guys will see. Um, but yeah, I, Luna knows what's up. She knows yeah. what's happening, and she wants this pack to work. She really wants this family. And I think that's really cool, because Sarah said before, you know, it's a, definitely a representation of how we're all searching for our pack and our people, especially in today's world with technology and such. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, you're a fan. Oh, yes. <laughs> Very true. And familial connection, obviously, through Garrett, you would think vision would be a part of that, but then on the other side of it, like, there's distance even in the, within the family, and... Yeah, there's definitely a disconnect with, you know, me and my brother being a certain way. <laughs> I was just about to say, yeah. <laughs> uh, connected with nature, as Rodrigo said. Um, and Rodrigo not being that way. And I think he's, you know, been an amazing father to us. And at the very beginning, I'm very, you know, I love my father and whatever. But I think as she moves through the season, she kind of goes into a little bit of a darker place. So that's all Ooh. I'll that's all I'll say. Mm, okay. <laughs> this is like very intriguing. You're like, she's going into a darker place. She has vision. I will not I'm say feeling anymore. very witchy vibes. You're going to get yelled at by I'm going to go ahead and say it, maybe. I don't know. Hopefully. We'll see. Tyler, I have to say, uh, sir. <laughs> I love you too. Aw. Uh, you're you're going to get a lot more of that very soon. <laughs> I'll save it. I'll save it. If this is a, a show that's about finding your pack, I would say from the get-go, you sort of are approaching this as a lone wolf from like what we can see, what we can do in so many ways. So talk about your character and not just, I think his mentality is a little bit about being separate and an outsider. Yeah, definitely. I think that this sense of like dysfunctionality that we get through this family dynamic is because even though he tries to put on this front of like, you know, he has this swagger, he seems like he's always having a good time. Deep down, he is, he's not really a happy kid. There's a big part of him missing, and you guys are going to find out what that is in the show. But he continues to just search for it. And, you know, towards the beginning, I don't want to say anything Hard. too much. Yes, um, but he tends to keep pushing that down and distracts himself. And, you know, when... All of this stuff sort of happens. He's definitely the last to really um, kind of agree and be on board with everyone else. I think I've scared them into being completely they ambiguous. They're so scared. <laughs> <laughs> they do Screamed not want to say anything. This panel. But the show think... does have a lot of twists and turns, so we do want to yeah. save that. Yes, no, and I don't want to go too far into it, but I will say this is... I think what we can tell is that this group of kids are already dealing with way more than the last group of kids is just based on, even though they all maybe, hey, we got, we got bites in this show and bites in the last show, but just what we've seen, Bella, like that is like 
serious. Like just the oh, whole, yeah. everything about this show goes deeper and more vicious and more violent and you can see it in your character. But also your character seems oddly nonchalant in that moment. <laughs> That's what I yeah. was like struck by. So talk about how she has that dynamic. I think Blake, likes to pretend that she's in denial. Like she knows that all of this is going on around her and she knows that it's probably for the best, but she just does not want to accept it at all. And I think once she does finally accept that she is part of the pack and it's beneficial to her and people she cares about that it's worth it and then she finds this new sense of family. For these new um, assumed to be pack members, I like it was with the first show, and Jeff's talked a lot about this. He cast it to make it easy for these folks to build this dynamic, but the proof of it has to be what you guys get to see on set. So I'll just ask, how did you guys fall into that? Um, Bella, I'll start with you. Um, well, I actually I knew Armani for a really long time before we started filming, and after the four of us found out we were cast, we got together for a dinner. And then we all flew out to Atlanta to film, and we spent like a month hanging out like every single day. And before just, we started filming. Yeah, before filming even started, and we just bonded, and we all fell in love with each other, and now we're family. <laughs> that, that can be a bad thing sometimes. <laughs> like, yeah. I remember on Teen Wolf, I told uh, Tyler Posey and Dylan O'Brien, you guys should probably start hanging out together, because you're supposed to look like best friends. And they've been, they were like, we've already been hanging out together. The moment they met, they were best friends. And these kids, the moment they meet in the show, they're all at odds with each other. So it's a little different. Yeah. So oh. remember, you still hate each other. Oh, that's like the worst. Well, you can't, you can't make them fight. It didn't sound like you guys were doing that. Anyway, um, Amarni, like, so what was it that you guys sort of bonded over while you were there? Like, was it COVID, right? Because you guys were probably in, like, COVID. Yeah, we were definitely still in COVID, but it was really just swimming and eating way too much food. That's really all we <laughs> tacos. did. Tacos. It was all hot. When we first got out to Atlanta, it was, like, in the hundreds, very humid. So we just sat at the pool all day, and we were like, all right, let's take this in, because we know we're about to be filming, like, 15 hours a day, let's, let's get it out of the way now so that we can just grind out the show. Oh my gosh, yeah, Atlanta heat is oppressive, so I don't <laughs> blame you for that one at all. Um, Chloe, I will say on set, you guys obviously are at odds. Jeff, it seems, has already previewed the fact that that was something that bled over onto scenes when y'all are supposed to be fighting, so I'm guessing there's stories of y'all laughing when you're supposed to be fighting. Is this correct? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think... We're pretty good about, you know, <laughs> staying focused, but I, we all enjoy what we do so much that it's actually one of the, it's such a dream that we get to be a family and this close and also do what we love. Um, this is my first leading role in anything. This is my first series, same for him. And um, I just think it's, thank you. <laughs> um, I think, the fact that we're so close has just made the show all the more special. And I think it'll be a lot more special for you guys that way because you'll get to connect with us just like how we connect with each other. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. That means a lot. It it means a lot. Um, Tyler, before we bring it back, because I definitely want to talk to you, Sarah, about just the dynamic of being on this and basically kind of seeing a flashback to part of your previous TV history. I definitely want to come to you next on that because I'm sure it was interesting to see. But Tyler, for you, I know we've got a lot to look forward to this season, and I know I think all of you have stuff that I think we can't talk about, but if you wanted to maybe preview what folks can sort of look ahead to say what the vibe of the show is and what they're going to be surprised about, can you maybe talk about that? And then I want to talk to you, Armani, about maybe what they should be, like, not surprised about that we can already talk about. Go ahead, Tyler. Definitely. Um, well, the show is, it's dark and it's violent and there's a lot of romance as well. And um, you guys are just gonna kind of be able to see everything, you know? Like, personally, Harlan is gay, and um, there's straight characters, there's, there's everything. A little bit of everything. There's everything. And it really, I think it's really gonna show everyone that like, that's only a part of someone, and really the, the broader scheme is that like deep down, everyone is really just like human and wants to just like be happy, and you're gonna see everyone kind of like gearing towards their own desires and Happy trying to find their happiness. I said fun. to, uh, I, I sent uh, Tyler a text a while back and I, because I was really happy with the performances and I'd like to give them a little shout out sometimes. But I said, look, 
other shows, like, like Will and Grace showed that uh, gay people can be a great best friend. Harlan is not a best friend. He's front and center, and his character is going to be just as sexualized as the other characters. Are you ready for it? And he said, yeah, absolutely. Anything you want me to do. So it's, it's been nice because these kids are up for anything. Season two, probably not. <laughs> wow. Well, that's a preview for your life right there. Okay, I'm very excited to see this one. Um, Armani, we see from the trailer you get to have, like, again, introducing her was already a thing. Having scenes with her has to be incredible, but what did it feel like stepping into your first scene and moment with Miss Chair Michelle Gellar? I was honestly a little nervous, to be totally <laughs> honest. I think we shot a scene in uh, my character's house at the time, uh, the first time that we filmed together, and I was like, wow, I'm... I'm really here. I think a lot of the times it's, it's weird how quick things can happen. You know, I would sit at home just uh, worrying about the auditions that I go out for and the ones that I'd lost, and it all happened very quick, and I'm just sitting there in a room on a huge production set filming with someone as big as her. And it, it was surreal, honestly, but I'm like, this is obviously what I'm meant to do, so let's just, let's just kick it off, I guess. <laughs> I love it. Um, even just in the trailer, seeing you take on this, like, I, I want to say, like, den mother role, like, you can just see it's all about protection, it's all about keeping everybody safe. It was so incredible to see. But what was it like for you watching, I mean, uh, y'all are talented actors, and you're right, but young actors really doing some of, the, like she's saying, her first lead role. What was it like for you being on set and sort of seeing that, I guess, in reverse in a lot of ways? You know, it's what you need. It's, it's what you feed off of. Like, e e when you've been doing it for so long, sometimes it becomes routine, it's a job, and you can lose the love and the passion. And, and I'm fortunate in that I still love what I do, and I'm so extremely grateful to get the opportunities that I get, and a lot of that is because of all of you guys here, but getting to relive that through their eyes just makes it that much more exciting and honestly enjoyable for me. Even today being here, like watching them see the floor at Comic-Con and seeing all the excitement, like it gets me excited in a way that you could lose over time. So I'm, I'm like I said, extremely grateful for, for all, all four of them and then specifically for this <laughs> gentleman right here who I, by the way, the same thing you said earlier, sometimes I like, I'm like, I can't believe I get to work with him. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, like. I'm I do it too. <laughs> I have to say as well, the, one of the great things is um, Sarah is also a really good producer. Uh, she'll be on set and she'll look over and say, you know, we could save two hours just by doing this, this, and this. And I'm like, she's right. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> she, this is a woman with 40 years of experience in the industry. Did you have to put a number on that? Oh. Really? Really? <laughs> we were, we're, we were talk, having we're such a good about friendship this. It was this. so good, you guys. You saw the, the, the deterioration. The bar. Thank you. Thank you. I, I have to say... I have to say one other thing, as a, as a fan of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, I mean, I saw the whole thing and, um, uh, when I was a kid. Uh, <laughs> I'm older than her, by the way. Hi, everyone. It was so great to see you. And... <laughs> Get back here. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> she no. is... My, I, one of my, my niece asks me all the time, do you ever meet celebrities? And I always say the same thing. I don't want to because you find out they're awful people, they're horrible to work with, and you can't watch their movies and TV anymore. And it's so, I'm so grateful that I can watch Buffy the Vampire Slayer and still absolutely love it, because this woman is a fucking amazing. She is. And, Such a love fest, man. And if I do have to say, and Scooby-Doo. <laughs> Cruel intentions. It is, though, and, and I know, like, you hear that a lot, right? You hear people say, oh, it's a family, and oh, this, and you're all like, oh, yeah, yeah. This is a really different experience. I think part of it is being on location in Atlanta is that we all take a step back from our lives and get to focus and be together. But, Jeff, if your career as a billion-dollar showrunner just goes, you could be a matchmaker. Yeah. Because you could really put together these dynamics of people that work great together but also get along really well together. Love it. Um, we're going to go right over here to a question. Um, if they want to line up either side, I don't know. I think we can get a couple of questions in before we have to get out of here. I'm going to start over here this time. Want to be equitable? Oh, OK. I wasn't expecting that. Hello. And neither was I, um, but we're good. <laughs> so my name is TJ. I'm from Maryland. Uh, kind of going off of what we were just talking about, my question is for Sarah. 
Um, but first, I wanted to just say thank you for being my hero and the hero for so many people at home watching. And first, um, so thank you, first of all. Uh, and my question is, we've talked about some of your iconic characters tonight. Uh, is there any qualities from those characters in the past that you relate to the character you're playing now? Um, and do any of them stand out? Like, do you draw from them for this character at all? All right, gonna go quick. Yeah, I think you always draw from them because they're all life experiences and I put myself wholeheartedly into every character that I've played. But I also think that I'm at such a different place in my life now. I'm a mom of two kids. I have a different life experience now. And so I really look at this character probably differently than I have in the past because my experiences are so different than what they were. I love it. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, really quickly though, guys, because I just have to make sure this is literally the only while, reason why I'm here. Jeff, what are the dates? <laughs> January 26th. For both shows. <laughs> Say it with Paramount me, ladies Plus. and gentlemen. January 26th, 26th. on Paramount Plus. <laughs> all right, I wish we could go longer, but there are so many people in this cast. Thank you all so, so very much. Thank you all for watching. I want thank to thank you. the folks at Paramount also, wait, Plus. Oh, wait, one last thank you. You truly, and I've done a few of these panels in my day, you truly are the greatest oh. moderator. The attention to detail, the inferences. Thank no, you. Am, am I wrong? Like, I agree. We love you. It is true. Thank you. Um, I'm going to go die now because Sarah Michelle Gellar likes me. Bye. <laughs> One more time, Everyone make some noise for this amazing cast!